My name is James Williams Jr. This is Kung Fu Havoc number two. It is a Wednesday night. It is 9.47 and this is my last video, which might be posted up first. We don't know. But we will find out when they hit YouTube at my Kung Fu Havoc number two setup. Okay. So, I have maybe taped about 10 videos since getting this camera back. And I have taped videos that have probably offended people for tonight. Not just because I haven't shaved and because I touched on some touchy subject matters and things that have generally pissed people off. I have a knack for pissing people off. Just like I used to have a knack for beating people's ass. Now, now that I'm hip placement and people think that I can't fight and they don't know that I'm secretly super fast with these hands because my hand game is lit. You know, I just have to remember who I am. Sometimes it's hard to forget. And sometimes it's even harder to keep my hands to myself. I make these videos for a reason. Like I said in my last two videos before this one, or three videos before this one, the measure of a man's success is generally measured by the opportunities given to him. When a person who is good is not given opportunities, we fall by the way of the wayside. I don't want to seek fame after I'm dead. I don't want to be like my hero Bruce Lee and then you guys discover me. After I'm long dead, oh yeah, well he made like nine movies, but he's dead. And, and you know, if that helps one of my kids make it, okay, cool. But you know, I'm in the here and the now. I'm 43, I don't have much time. And I want to get into acting before my age catches up with my face. Alright? And yes, 43 very well may be the new 18 by the time someone sees this video. But you know, the principal other thing is, I make these videos as my outlet for venting. As my means of being discovered and hopefully somebody from one of my favorite shows or maybe Amazon or maybe Netflix will pick this up and say yeah we can give you a podcast and you can work from home or we can give you a TV show and you may have to move here or there or whatever I would prefer us to do it right smack did here in Virginia all you have to do is buy a studio and show up and I'll be at the door I'll be the first long haired freak at the door ready to go I already have a movie crew. We made movies. We just didn't have enough revenue and enough people to be in the movies to tell the story that I want to tell. So I made these movies for the simple fact that every time I've gone to a casting call, every time, we've had John Casablanca, we've had other people that I can't remember show up at the Omni, show up at the Sheraton, show up at the Cavalier, and show up at the Days, and show up at the Holiday Inn. And every time, this is not the card they hand out, but this is an example. The people that they chose to keep got something like this. Sometimes it was a SpongeBob card. Sometimes it was a Pokemon card. I guess it just depends on who came, where, when, and how. Last one I went to was at the Omni. And the guy told me that if I really wanted to do this, I should probably look into doing theater work. Okay, here's the problem with that. I'm not a theater actor. I'm an improv specialist. I love improv acting. I love acting in general. Improving is a little bit more fresher. You don't have to remember everything you said, but you know you get to say stuff that's not on script, and you get to think outside the box. Which most of my scripts that I've made are are basically improv. Okay, now let me explain why. Because I can't remember shit. I had a few concussions when I was five. I tried to fly, but I was the greatest American hero. Thank you, William Katz. You guys can find him somewhere or whatever. And I still have the scar. Now, you know there are a lot of things that I have gone through in life. But these casting calls were the worst. I have mentioned this list that I will never be on because apparently no one writes characters that represent me. There are no stories with characters who have a parent that doesn't match the other parent. Who does not have a black dad and a white mom. Or we don't have an Asian mom and a black dad. Or a black mom and an Asian dad. Or a white mom and an Asian dad. They don't write characters for me. Right? And unfortunately, I hate to say this, most people don't even know what the fuck my ethnicity is. So let me give that rundown to you one more time. I am Cherokee Indian. I am black. And I am white. Alright? Now the thing is, there's no characters, there's no scripts in Hollywood for people like me. Ever. So how can I prove my acting skills if I can't play a character that does not exist? Alright? And that's the thing about acting. It's all entertainment. The role that I am given should not have to do much with my looks. After all, a lot of superheroes have been changed in color and gender for lots of reasons in comic books. 
Iron Man is now a black chick. I don't know how that works, but okay. I, I don't read Iron Man, so whatever works. If it's floating Tony Stark's boat, yippee fucking Kaye. You know, if, uh, oh, in, in some comic books, Captain America is also a chick. Although now Captain America right now is Falcon, and he's a black man, so that's cool. But um, there was also another black guy who rode with Captain America named um, Battalion. I think it was Battalion. He was one of Silver Sable's Wild Pack or whatever. He had the Triangle Shield. And I think Captain America might have actually gave him that shield. But anyway, you know, so there's a, there's a lot of color, gender substitutions in superheroes and stuff. And, you know, that's fine and dandy as long as the people who are writing it are writing it for those specific people. But when I go to these casting calls and there's these lists, and I go in there, and I'll shave this off or... I'll pull this back and I'll be in a ponytail now or something in the Jesus look or the Norman Reedus look. Nothing has worked for me. Period. So when I make these videos, I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm not trying to be an ass. I can't help those things. I'm just those things. And if that's how you feel about me, that's fine. You're entitled to that. But the problem is, when you're trying to break into this business, and it is a cutthroat business, and it's not for everybody, and maybe it's not for... Maybe that's why I haven't had any milestones and success at this thing. But, you know, the thing is, I'm about making my fans happy, too. And everything I've ever done out here in Charlottesville, anywhere that I've filmed in Charlottesville or anywhere, if someone asks me, I take the time to explain to them what's going on. And I tell them everything they want to know. I don't sugarcoat it, and I don't swear when there's children around. But, you know, anything that I'm involved with, if you happen to be walking by and I'm filming... Regardless of what mood I'm in, I will take the time to let you know what's going on. Hell, I will ask you if you want to participate. Hell, I will ask you for ideas. Because sometimes an outside influence could make your film. It just could. You know, I've done things in my films that other people have suggested, even though I was against it at first, and they kind of worked out. So, therefore. Now, you know, I've, I've done a lot of things that uh, go unappreciated, you know, that's cool and everything. You know, not everybody's going to like what you do. And as, as I tell people a lot of times, the measure of your success in film work, not every actor makes a good film that's just off the chain. There have been plenty of films with Brad Pitt in them that just, that just suck. You know, now I'm not knocking Brad Pitt. I like him. I don't really hate him. I don't really watch a lot of his movies. The only movie of his that I truly liked was World War Z and Cool World. You know, and everybody's like, well, that's only two of his movies. Okay, here's the thing. He doesn't make the movies that I'm into, so I don't really go watch them. Everybody loves zombies. So I loved World War Z. I love cartoons. I loved Cool World. Now, a lot of the other things he made, I liked Mr. and Mrs. Smith. It really wasn't for me, but I liked it. No, it wasn't my kind of movie, because I do kung fu. I like Kung Fu and I like science fiction. If he made a science fiction movie, I'm sure I would check it out. You know, I don't like Tom Cruise, but I like The Edge of Tomorrow. I don't hate Tom Cruise, but again, he doesn't make movies that's into me. Outside of all those Mission Impossibles and this Jack Reacher thing that I'm going to check out because I didn't see the first one. But, you know, I'm going to check out, you know, I'm into action movies. You know, honestly, truly, the guy, I'm more into action movies. I did, like, um... Legends of the Fall with Brad Pitt. No, I'm not kissing your ass, Brad. I'm just putting that out there because that's one of the three movies that I've, that he's done that I've actually saw. I have not seen Benjamin Button, but I'm going to just to get that out of the way because it would be cool to be able to age in reverse as long as I don't age out of existence. But then again, it might not hurt that much if I become a sperm and an egg as compared to growing exceptionally old and becoming a pile of dust. Anyway, you know, when you go to these things, you can ask anybody who, who makes movies especially independent movies. And we go to these casting calls, you know, we're expecting to be discovered. We're expecting to be seen. We're expecting to, for someone to look at us and say, you have that it factor. We're going to take you. We're going to change your life forever. You're never going to push another burger. You're never going to sweep another floor. You're never going to clean another toilet. I have gotten the opposite of that, like totally and completely. And like I said, the measure of a successful person is on the opportunities that they have been given. I want to be an actor that's working. Whether I'm successful to everyone or not, me being a working actor 
would be fucking successful. Okay? So you gotta you gotta see where people are coming from. Because you know, I came up poor. I'm still poor. I'm struggling. I'm busting my ass. The army's not paying me more than 260 bucks a week. You try managing that, I mean 260 bucks a month. You try managing that for a month and seeing how far you can get. Hell, if I wasn't living at my mom's house, I would be a homeless bum without a computer. So, you know, you have the, you have the, everybody has a different measure of success. Me becoming a working actor, you better believe me, the second that I get a working role, even if it's like for five minutes, now if I'm only on the screen for five minutes and I die, you better believe that the next role, I'm going to do better. The next role, I'm going to do better because I'm going to keep striving and I'm going to take every role I can get that's morally right. No. Now, granted, like I said, I only make my own movies because nobody in Hollywood or anywhere else that there's an establishment of acting has written characters like me. You know, they haven't written characters where someone who could be Native American and black and do Native American and black things and live between the two worlds. And no, that's not a quote from Ghost Rider. That's just the way my life is. Because I will tell you, I've had um, some interesting experiences, you know... To be truthful and be honest, I've had some interesting experiences. And, you know, a lot of people, they don't want to tell you about their life experiences. And I don't have a problem telling people about my life experiences. And I just miss Modern Family, damn it. I think I missed it. Yep, totally missed it. Like, an hour ago. <laughs> that sucks. Because it was a Halloween special. But, you know, it. a lot of people don't want to give you their life experiences. I don't have a problem giving mine because the simple fact, you know, things do happen. And life experience gives you choices, gives you things that you can talk about. It gives you an outlet, you know. I will definitely put up more comic videos or whatever. Like I said, I don't think I'm funny, but you guys might. But I have good stories. But, you know, a, a lot of the things that you aren't willing to share with people might actually be something that people need to hear and need to know. So in closing, I'm James Williams Jr. This is Comfort Happy Number 2. Be seeing you.